Hey everybody, this is Marcus, and today's review is going to be of this hunk of glass. This is the 80 millimeter 1.7 for the GFX system. I did my initial review months ago, and since then I've taken this on several shoots. I'm gonna show you my best images that I've taken with this, where I think it fits in the GFX lineup, and uh, is it worth the price tag? There's a lot of mixed reviews on this lens. I'm not gonna pull any punches. I mean, I don't care whether you buy one or not, but I'm just gonna show you what I think it's best at, what it excels at, if it's worth the money, and let you make the final decision on your own. So let's get into this. And as always, everybody, please go to ProphotoEdits.com where you can download my Lightroom pre-tests and Photoshop actions. Every single image that you're going to see today, besides the things that we hop into Lightroom and take a peek at, are going to be edited with these presets in Lightroom. And um, I'll run through some of the presets on some of these photos when we hop into Lightroom later on this video. And I also want to let you guys know about my brand new course that's up. This is my complete lighting and editing course. I take you from A to Z, how I get all my in-camera effects that you see on all my photos on my Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, um, go ahead. Link will be in the description. Go ahead and check me out over there. Um, all the behind the scenes stuff that's going to teach you how to get dynamic images with unique lighting. All the different tricks that I use. And then we're going to take those raw files and we're going to go into Photoshop um, and we're going to edit from A to Z there. I have complete screen recorded edits and you get the raw files as well. So you can edit right alongside with me. I truly think this will help push you over the top if you're struggling. Um, Everything is very well explained and the course is gonna keep on growing. Next week I have a new edit that's going in there too. So it's 50% off right now. And um, everyone that's overseas, I wanna let you know, just contact me directly through my site, Profoto Edits, at the contact link. And um, I'll send you a special um, link to go ahead and check out because I know Gumroad doesn't let people from overseas outside of the USA check out right now. So just message me through um, ProphotoEdits.com and I'll send you a unique link and um, get that for you. So all right guys, I'm gonna keep this review short today and um, I'm gonna show you some of the best shots that I've taken with this lens. And uh, I think as we watch this, watch some of the BTS from all these shots that I got, or some of these shots I should say. Um, and then we'll pixel peep some of the files in Lightroom like we always do. Um, my buddy Warren, his old custom, um, custom painted, uh, this is a Mustang, I think it's a 60 something Mustang, early 70s maybe. And uh, my friend Hannah, and I took this longer shot here with this um, 81.7. I use the 45 a lot on this shoot and the 35 on my uh, R5 as well. So I'm trying to figure out where the 80 fits in here for me. So this is a 81.7 shot wide open. I'm just using the reflector here. Warren's behind me and I'm just reflecting the light back onto her. And this is the longest shot and you can see that the colors are perfect. I just edited this with my presets. did some skin retouching and Photoshop and um, I have no knocks in this lens as far as like clarity, color. The fall off the bokeh is absolutely amazing. Um, focus speed is pretty slow it's pretty abysmal in my opinion but you know it is what it is they should have put a better motor in this lens um on this day i just didn't take as many because i'm finding out as i look at these files that i typically prefer the, the focal length of 45 and 110 so i wanted to see how the 81.7 would work in the studio with um some mid-body um just like studio boudoir shots where i kind of get an angle and shoot up and um to see how it would compare against some other lenses i'm not going to compare it right now but um focus speed was a little bit slow and it was you know kind of a dimly lit studio which i usually have and i'll show you um the results were really good and then i'm gonna get into some uh focal length speed tests here in a second to show you how slow it really is so the one thing that i really like about the 81.7 for shots like this is you know the dreaminess it reminds me of it's weird that I'm saying this like <laughs> my 1.2s, kinda. It's not quite as uh, shallow depth of field as the 1.2s, but the colors um, are really nice. And I just did some skin retouching and um, my Lightroom presets on this. But um, I like that I could get a slight angle on this shot. And um, the colors are just magnificent. The fall off is nice. I mean, she's up against the wall, as close as you can get to a wall. So the fall off, you're not gonna see too much. But um, the thing that holds this lens back for me, again, comes down to the focus speed and I'm going to show you that right now so watch this through the lens footage and this is on my 50R by the way it's a little bit better on my S2 um, only with I have the uh, high speed option turned on or rapid AF but watch how it goes to infinity and back sometimes and stutters you know right there it does that quite often and then it's like she didn't move and at 1.7 nobody can really move when you're taking a portrait like this and it doesn't help that when it goes back and forth like that right there um, against um, 
a decent backlight right here you can see it performs about the same as it did before hunts back now um, and I'm not sure if it's always hunting and it just slow and then I got a couple of these shots in focus and I'll show them to you in Photoshop in a second or in Lightroom I should say and then it'll go all the way back rack and then boom so it's not very fast and it hunts quite a bit so this is on the 50R as well and it's faster on the 50S2 and this is with the 110 so people compare it to this a lot and I just want to show you the difference um, the blackout times better on the S2 as well you've seen a lot of blackout here but watch it it just grabs the eye or wherever I put the focus point grabs it it doesn't pulsate but just one time acquire focus and then take the shot I'm just firing off way more confidently here because boom got it um, way quicker and I don't really have to worry about because she's moving around a little bit and if she'd been moving around like this with the 81.7 with it going in and out in and out I would have missed all these shots but this isn't really a review video and this is one of the shots no editing just Lightroom preset the heavy backlit that you saw a second ago um, wide open at 1.7 and I did get this shot fully in focus and we'll hop into Lightroom in a second I'll let you look at this file and I'll actually put it in the link below so you can download it and play with it and um, see how it is but I missed a lot of shots on this day the rendering is awesome I mean look at the uh, look at the fall off in the hair it handles the flare really well it actually sometimes flares out just a bit which I kind of like um, it has like a little bit of a green dot in some of the flare but um it's very beautiful rendering it's just kind of slow and that's my main knock so in the studio let me show you why i think this lens excels and by the way if you've already bought the class or are gonna buy the class i just did edit number eight and it's this file you're looking at right now it's a fine art edit and uh, you get the raw file the photoshop actions lightroom preset the screen recording of me editing this so you can edit right along and this is like uh, not a heavy-handed edit this is like the devil's in the details type edit so it's just um um, fine art retouching so anyway I think this is where this lens excels you can see this um, not too close not like a super close-up I think like a little bit below the shoulder and frame it like this it excels really well you can see the fall off is really beautiful you can um, see the hair fall off really well but if you get too close with this lens I think it distorts the features a little bit too much it pulls the nose um, a little bit you know like if you got close with like a 60 millimeter it kind of distort the nose a little bit it's not like a, a longer focal length where what you see is what you get again framing like this I think this is just a studio and um, using some shadow play here and frame like this is really really beautiful waist up uh, the fall off is really great colors are extremely great let's hop into Lightroom and look at some of these files then I'll give you my final takes on this lens and uh, let you know what I think about it long term now. Alright guys, so let's look at some of these raw files real quick. And um, this is just straight out of the camera on the 50R. Exposure bump just a little bit. And I'll show you um, just like how sharp it can be. How sharp it is actually. So look at that. That's extremely sharp. That's way sharp. Let's see if I can get this to go any higher than that. Um, let's go to 200%. Alright look at that count every single eyelash the eye is really really sharp um, and again I'm not like a sharpness nerd because I mean uh, I think portrait lens are better sometimes a little less sharp and I think this is maybe just a tick less sharp than the 110 I can't tell you the truth but I don't think that matters but look at the fall off over here in the hair um, I need to back out so you can see that better but you can actually see it as we're just looking it has very nice soft like beautiful fall off um, and again incredibly sharp the problem is and i like this shot a lot right she just stand there in natural light and i put one of my presets on there to kind of bring it you know more of an editorial style that's straight out of the camera so one of the new gfx presets and um look it's way out of focus that's one of my issues with this like i missed so many shots that would have been such a beautiful shot um frame just like this i told you mid shoulder not getting too much closer than that the hair falling off right there really 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 beautiful here with nice backlight it, it handles the backlight really well no preset on this i just bumped up the uh um, whites a little bit on here for you um let's see got the eye real nice and sharp when it lands it's really good you know it's really good when it lands I'll show you some of the flare real quick um, look at the flare on this this is kind of how it flares this is kind of weird it it sometimes gives you this up here and let's see if I can get another shot um, yeah it gives you this little green dot sometimes and there's no filter on the front of the lens so this is actually you know what you're getting there um, let's take a look at this 
um, I got the flare up here this time because it's just different framing um, I put a preset on there to kind of make it more editorial but look um, let's see if we got the eyes on this yeah I think so but you know it's just kind of hit and miss hit and miss hit and miss and I show you get kind of closer here and I think this let's see if I got this shot I did I well no I got the eyelashes and I mean that's just what you get with any slower camera system slower lens that doesn't have a really good IAF now on the 100s you may have a better hit rate I'm actually sure you will but my 110 I don't worry about it as much and especially I'm spoiled with my R5 and all those lenses I don't I couldn't even tell you the last time I missed a shot honestly at 1.2 but I mean this is what you get with medium format and I'm happy with the overall quality I just want to talk to you about this photo I think this is too close for this lens for most people I mean Taylor doesn't have a big nose it's just a, a regular size nose maybe even smaller all right so this is the shot I was talking about before and to see um, look how dreamy that fall off is right there on the back shoulder going out of focus and everything um, very warm again the Sun was coming way down and it handled the flare really well as long as you get it I can't say handle the flare you got to choose your angle so you don't get that dot okay guys so final thoughts download the raw files and play with them they're down below um i'll let you look at some of these images right now as i talk you out my final thoughts on this lens is it's really good quality wise it's just pretty slow um kind of slow to the point where i miss more shots than than i'd like to um i'm in a weird position with this because i have the 45 and the 110 um i find myself using those lenses a lot because like i'm a 35 and 85 type of guy on full frame um i bought the 80 thinking that it would kind of like put me in a position where i like oh the crazy crazy bokeh fall off of the 1.7 and it has incredible output the colors are great the sharpness is great um all that doesn't matter if you're missing shots if you can use it in the studio like i talked about and have somebody that holds still um you have very good results but you have the 110 on the list as well and uh, i reach for the 110 more just because i can get closer if i have to get closer um it won't distort as much it's faster i don't worry about it missing shots as much of course i think the 110 is probably the pinnacle of just like raw output and i think the the bokeh on this lens is incredible like the quality of the bokeh um it's not like a 1.285 though it doesn't have that much fall off it's similar to like a 1.6 maybe um i would say uh, on full frame so don't think that you're going to get this lens and, and uh see like um it compete with the 1.2s on full frame um as far as just like separation and stuff like that it's not but this is a medium format lens and as far as what we have autofocus wise on medium format i think it is output wise um as they said it was incredible the colors everything is there except for the focusing speed um if this is right for you as far as your focal length 60 ish 67 ish on uh, full frame it's kind of weird for me i don't reach for that as much okay where i think it's gonna um really fall in line for me is like um in home uh boudoir shoots and uh outdoor shots where i want to show a little bit more of the environment and don't want so much compression um but saying that i feel like the 110 when i put it on i'm always like wow okay and that's just it's speaking to me better you know so i keep shooting with it um i'm not knocking this lens at all it's beautiful i haven't sold it i've kept it um i just always put the 110 on instead of this you know what i mean and that's just me other people say hey the eight the uh, 80 is like where it's at and um it may be for you i would say rent it i'm not trying to sell you any lenses i don't make any money off of this stuff but um rent it and see if you like it it's definitely before you spend the money i would rent this lens it may focus too slow for you it may not be the focal length that you like um it may be a boring lens um but anyway until next time man it's marcus i love you guys i have weekly video videos for you guys please like and subscribe and comment down below it helps the channel out a lot all right love you guys later